What's up guys? Yo. Welcome back. Today we are showing you the best way to increase your fitness and burn fat using the treadmill. So we've got three beautiful techniques to show you today, starting with the phrase, everybody says it, HIIT training. What is it? How do we do it? Pros, cons, John. You hit the nail on the head. A lot of people claim to be doing HIIT training, but they're actually not. They're not actually working hard enough for it to be HIIT training. HIIT training stands for High Intensity Interval Training. It means you work your absolute nuts off, like 100% effort for a very short period of time. If you're sprinting, that will be roughly 10 to 20 seconds. Not really any longer because your body can't resynthesize ATP any faster than that. Hence why Olympic runners sprint for 100 meters, roughly 10 seconds. Your recovery is gonna be about double that. So if you are sprinting for 20 seconds, you're gonna have a 40 second recovery, usually doing absolutely nothing. So there is your first huge pro for HIIT training. It's super time effective. A whole treadmill workout should take you no longer than 10 to 15 minutes. If it is, you may be doing it wrong. Another benefit of HIIT training is the calories burned. Oh, yeah. Not only is it time efficient, you burn a decent amount of calories. Not necessarily in that 10 to 20 minute time interval, but over the period of 24 to maybe 72 hours. You have a thing that you might have heard called the afterburn effect, or EPOC. It stands for Exercise Post Oxygen Consumption. It basically means you owe your body a debt of oxygen so you carry on burning calories for a prolonged period of time. Now don't get carried away with this thinking you're gonna burn thousands of calories, you're not. Like an absolute maximum, you're gonna burn around 300 calories if you put your absolute heart and soul into this workout. Fitness. Your fitness levels will go through the roof Especially during HIIT training. Especially at a high output level. Exactly that, so remember fitness levels pro. So another slight negative that we've got with HIIT training, get your safety caps out that guys, is. is jumping on and off the treadmill or actually trying to change the speed. So when you're running flat out, we've all been there, when you're trying to get the speed down and you're flipping around, trying to get the buttons and all the rest of it, you can end up flying off the back. And also when you're jumping off and you wanna jump back on and you're keeping that belt at full speed, if you time that wrong, you are gonna be a new piece of wallpaper in the gym. You are. We're actually using the Techno Gym My Run, which has got a nice, it's a little sexy flappy paddle. Nice. Up and down, saves the effort straight away. It's like having a Ferrari, you know? It is. <laughs> yeah. There's one more negative I'm gonna throw in there. Oh no. It is very, very high stress. Yes. You can't really do more than maybe two to three, unless you're an athlete, real HIIT training sessions a week. They're just too taxing, especially if you wanna get a leg session in as well and you're sprinting. Yeah. Or if you're doing dead muscle sprints, because they are brutal. So bear in mind, if you're quite a stressed person, when you're working out, you are stressing yourself again. So maybe our next style of cardio, which is low intensity, steady state, might be slightly better for you because it's lower stress. Number two, we're looking at lifts or low intensity steady state. This is for your characters who have got a little bit of rehab, maybe you don't want to sprint or you don't feel comfortable sprinting on the treadmill or you've got a little bit more time. It's a lot less stress. Yeah, basically it's going to be a very slow walk, maybe an incline, maybe even a very light jog. You could do it outside, go for a walk on the beach as well. This is often used as well when people are dieting quite hard. They're getting towards the end of their diet and they don't have the energy to really give the conviction that HIIT training warrants. So they're just like, I'm gonna watch a movie and I'm gonna walk for a bit. So the pros of list training on the treadmill, you're gonna burn a decent amount of calories right there in during that workout. Your overall aerobic capacity is gonna increase as well. So it's not too bad. Negatives? It's very, very time consuming. And if you don't like doing it like me, it's boring as shit. <laughs> It really is, unless you've got an iPad you can watch a film on. I mean, you could do it on a recumbent bike and sit there with a film. Yeah, yeah. Um, great for rehabilitation as well. Yeah. The last one we're going to touch on is a bit of a hybrid of the both, and it's called fartlek training. Let, let me just jump in. When I first learned this, when I first became a personal trainer, I didn't used to be able to say the name fartlek because I was so immature that every time I said fartlek, I was like, huh, fart. <laughs> this is what I have to put up with. So basically fartlek is kind of, it's at it's random. Like, it's like a hybrid. Isn't yeah, it? it could be like in blocks up and down. It could be a walk, then a 20 second sprint, then a jog for a minute. It can be really random. And what it will do is it will keep you on your toes and surprised. It will take you through different kind of energy systems. It will get you working at your maximal capacity and at a very low capacity. So it's, it's, it's gonna have the best of both worlds, but it's not gonna give you the absolute kind of performance you're gonna get from HIIT training, and it's not gonna give you the low intensity kind of just relaxing and recovering that you're gonna get from low intensity steady state. 
Most treadmills will have a basic fat leg button that you can press, put your details in, and it will do everything else for you. If you don't have that option, get outside, use treadmills. I keep saying treadmills. Use <laughs> lampposts. You can walk from one to the second, from the second to the third you can sprint, from the third to the fourth you can lunge and so on. Mix it up, use heels. You know what I mean. You're gonna burn calories, you're gonna keep your brain stimulated. It's gonna be freaking awesome. So which is the best kind of protocol to use? The answer is, it depends on the person. Exactly. If you can do more HIIT training and you're at a higher kind of development in your kind of performance, then go for that. Yeah. If you want something that's a little bit more relaxing, you're on a diet, you might go for a low intensity steady state. If you just want to mix it up and have a bit of fun, you might use Fartlek. So quick disclaimer, we're not being paid, it's, it's not an not, advert. This might seem like an ad because there's a lot more about treadmill, right? Yeah. But it's not. But if you are on a little bit of a budget and you want something at home without being a huge industrial treadmill, the Myron, I will say, is freaking awesome. We've been using it for the last couple of days, so if it's got your taste buds tingling a little bit, we're going to put a link in the description, so go check it out. All the details are there. On that bombshell, as I always keep saying, we're going to leave. If you're loving these kind of tutorial videos, give it a massive thumbs up. Don't forget to comment below. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to tell us that we look awesome. Don't forget to come back next week. Don't forget to tell us you love us. Did I miss anything? Um, don't don't forget to be awesome. Don't forget to be awesome. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.